How do you think about prompting? And do you have approaches or mindsets that you use when you're actually prompting or, and maybe you could even talk about particular situations or examples. Yeah. So generally speaking, um, I think there's, there's a lot to teach there and there's a lot to explore, but at the very base level, even when I use it on my, on a day-to-day -day basis, I find myself just talking to it like a human. Um, and there's this very, very basic question and, and thing that I needed to clarify with myself early on. And that is because you see all these kind of like fancy prompts and approaches and personas and context and priming it with information and, and uh, you know, feeding it five examples or databases in advance, whatever. But at the end of the day, only thing that matters is that you get a result that you're happy with, right? So that, that is one of the first things that one needs to realize, like what makes a good prompt, right? That is, that's kind of a big question. And the answer is very simple. It's when you get a result that you're satisfied, satisfied with, your prompt is good enough. So often a single sentence might just do it, right? But when that doesn't yield the results that um, it could be, there's that component of, yeah, you also need to be aware of what it could do, right? That, that comes with education. But at the very base level, when I try to get something very simple done, just ask a very simple question like I would an assistant. Um, and then beyond that, there's, you know, I have certain frameworks and ways of kind of fleshing it out and adding the context it needs and specific techniques to get more advanced results can help in certain situations. But in my day to day, whenever I encounter a problem, like for example, I was doing my counting and I ran into a little problem with um, a calendar with like, different conversion rates in it being transferred to Excel file. And I didn't just want to type it. I just told it like, can you turn this into Excel file? And it just did it right. Like there's no need for the super advanced techniques if the simple one does it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the first thing I would say. And honestly, that for most people that unlocks like 60 to 70% of the use cases already just mm -hmm. talking to it. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll just add this one, one more point, very important point. Um, is that prompting is often like packaged in this kind of like mysterious way and people say like prompt engineering and then it, it gets certain people who are not that deep into it confused and they're like, sounds like a technical skill. At the end of the day, it's just communication. It's just good communication. The same things, same rules that apply to good communication apply to good prompting. Um, be concise, avoid ambigu ambiguity at all costs, right? Um, these principles will go a long way. If your sentences are convoluted and it's not not even a human would clearly understand what you're trying to communicate there, large language model is going to have a problem with that too because all it did was get trained on things that humans said and human communication. So if you get if you're good at communication, chances are you're quite good at this, and that's why a lot of that's why a lot of people who have natural communication skills really excel at prompting too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really nice definition, right? A good prompt is one that gives you a good result. It really gets you back to the basics. Yeah, well said. And agreed about the communication. Uh, when I've uh, taught marketing and copywriting, I always basically start out by saying, we're studying thinking, right? We're studying thinking and we're studying communication, but we're going to do it by practicing marketing and copywriting. And then now with AI, when I teach this stuff in prompting, I say the same thing because it really is about clarifying your thinking. If you can get your thinking clear, then the solution to the prompt is very, it's easy. It's right in front of you. My kind of basic go-to structure is first of all, to set a role for the AI. So this is specifically around um, large language models where you're dealing with text. But I think if you set the the AI and give it a role. So, you know, let's use copywriting, for example. So you might say you are a copywriting expert and then you set your, your basic instruction next. So role, then you give it an instruction and then you give it some parameters to operate in. So you might say, um, as my instruction, I want you to write a Twitter post uh, about how to be a good copywriter. And then for the parameters, you might say, I don't want you to use any emojis or I don't want you to, to use any hashtags. And then you might say, um, I want you to output it in a very specific way. And for the output, this is where you might want to do something like give an example. So um, if you've used Twitter or X, um, 
you've probably seen that posts that do very well often have lines in between them, often are quite short, quite to the point, have a good hook. So you might want to take an example of a, a tweet that's performed quite well, copy that in, and then you've basically set a role, given some instructions, set your parameters, given an example, and then you will get your response. And th those are kind of the, the basic things that kind of go through my head about how to get the best out of an AI. Just like you can learn communication skills, you can learn soft skills, you can learn to be what's called a prompt engineer. And a lot of that is around understanding uh, what structure is best to use. So just before, you know, I, I mentioned giving the AI an example of what you want output. Now, lots of people, when they first kind of log into something like ChatGPT or any AI system, especially the image generation systems, might just give a very basic um, instruction. So, you know, write me a blog post on marketing. Uh, if you're not giving really detailed information, like this is what I want my H1, H2 headers to be, I would like you to output this using HTML code in the code window so I can copy it. Here's an example of a blog post or a blog format. That second option is going to give you a much better result, much more focused result that you can then work with rather than, you know, expecting something of the AI and then getting frustrated when it doesn't produce exactly what you want. I find with AI, it's not so much a skill of prompting. It's uh, how you use it in the workflow, how you're using it in your day to day. It's the, it's the zooming out and looking at that big picture. So when it comes to business and life, I'm, I'm thinking about what that means for me. How am I going about that? And I'll explain that to uh, a conversation in GPT and it'll help me figure things out. So at the very least, it's a sounding board that I use mm. it for. At the very most, it's an assistant that helps me go through the, uh, the paces of both design, decision-making, and um, also generating part of my creative work as well. It really is infused in a lot of what I do from, from life, business. It's, it's a really useful uh, enhancement to have in general. So how much are you using it? Like how many times a day are you checking in with generative intelligence? I think I think I'm an addict in that case. I've I'm constantly got it open. I think you, you can use it for for almost anything, really. Anything that you need to think through as a problem is fantastic. I've like I say, I've always got that GPT window open. Um and I'll be copy and pasting bits of information into it um every day. It's it's actually quite hard to tell you how many times because it just seems consistently infused in stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. So in other words, it's, you're augmented now. It's now kind of like wired in. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I think, uh -huh. think alongside it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Rick Kurzweil, I, I love that term, extended neocortex. You're, you're, uh, you're already starting there, huh? <laughs> what are a couple of things? So, I mean, you've already said some really fascinating stuff here. Um, I thought it was really, really a good way to look at this that it's not just about prompting, but how you use it in your workflow. It's like redesigning and architecting how you work. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. It's it's um, it, it's 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 metacognizance. It's thinking about thinking. I think that's the main skill when it comes to using AI in 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 anything that you're doing with it. Really, it's it's not so much okay. I'm gonna template this prompt in such a way and it's going to get me that result i think it's more about zooming out from the problem instead of being a a, a designer or a storyteller that would get in and, and sketch the storyboard exactly now i'm thinking about the storyboard or the design of the vehicle from a from a direction point of view like a creative director what are the challenges that i see how can i tackle that that's the the skill that I've found so far in this journey that's as you as you pointed out evolving quickly um to be the main one actually thinking about thinking okay quick action step here so the key is learning how to prompt better you start out prompting by just asking questions and talking to AI like it's a helper but you quickly realize that getting better at prompting is a huge accelerator and game changer for your own success in life.
So these prompts will not only help you get a lot more done faster and accelerate your success, but they'll also help you really get prompting and get better at it. You can get all of these as a gift from me just by going to metamind.co forward slash gift. That's metamind.co forward slash gift. And I'll put that link below and then just opt in to get it. I've also created a powerful video for you called AI in the Future of Business and Work and Success that demonstrates some of the key mindsets and prompting strategies to help you get up to speed and get a lot more out of generative AI. And it's also included as a free gift when you register. So just head over to metamind.co forward slash gift to get your AI accelerator prompt pack and the other free goodies. All right, back to our interview. When I think about entrepreneurship, the biggest jump for an entrepreneur is going from a solopreneur to getting a team or mm -hmm. even one person, the first person. Yeah. And there's a lot of excuses at that point in terms of, oh, this person, we didn't get the right person. They don't do what we want them to do, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And usually, once you mature as an entrepreneur, you realize that we did not delegate properly. We did not give it the right information. We did not give the people the right information for them to know. Because we've been involved in mm. whatever we were delegating for so long. And we just expect someone who has just come in to know exactly and have the context that we have. We, they don't. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with AI and prompting. Mm -hmm. And that's the big change right now. What is ChatGPT is it's able to take human language, convert it into code and machine language and convert that back into human results, mm -hmm. right? But without context, it is useless because it's going to give you a very general approach to whatever you've given it. It's the same mm -hmm. with a new employee or a new team member that you bring on and you don't give them enough onboarding, enough context, enough ideas and training to understand the different systems that are around them that have already been implemented. That's the context you've got to give the prompt when you're asking for certain um, information from ChatGPT or any sort of language model that you're using, whether it's BARD or anything else, mm -hmm. the, the context is so important so that you can give it guardrails around what it, you're asking of it so that it doesn't go in different directions to do whatever it thinks that it should be doing. Obviously, the first thing when you're signing a prompt is asking it to act like something. So mm -hmm. that's the first way that you can really get it to know what you're talking about in terms of context. So act like a best-selling author and write mm -hmm. me this paragraph. Act like a expert market, marketer and write me this landing page. Really mm -hmm. powerful. Another really cool thing to do is use a plugin uh, like WebPilot or something that can look through the internet and say, find me the top five performing landing pages in my industry, which is X, that helps an audience that is Y. And it'll go and do its research and come back. Then you say, okay, now that you've analyzed these, can, no, now that you've given me this list, analyze these and give me a landing page that I want to create for my audience on this product. So it'll take the best of that and then create this landing page template that you can use. Or you can look at a landing page template as an example and say, this worked really well. Now you put that into chat GPT and say, analyze this, break it down into a template. It'll do that and then use that template to create one for yourself. And you can do that in seconds, in like really quickly, right? Um, mm -hmm. that those are really powerful things to do. And one of the most powerful things to do is called recursion. And that's a computer science term. It is using the output of, uh, of the first input that you gave it as the next input to the next prompt. So whatever it is that you're doing, use recursion in the sense that you say, Hey, let's do this first. And based on this input, Based on this output, let's create that output as the new input for my next prompt. There was one morning when I was having some coffee and I was saying, gosh, I have, I have so many things in my head right now. You know, and, and just, I had I was in a state of overwhelm, even though I try not to be. But I have so many things in my head. I want to get back to these people and do these things. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to let something slip through the cracks. And so I decided to, once again, use voice transcription on my phone. And I just did a brain dump of all. i got to get back to this person, call this person, do this thing, pay this bill, whatever it was whether it was personal or business. So it's all this, 
this mess of a transcription, I put it into ChatGPT and I said, now organize this for me into logical categories. And it's like, okay, boom. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I started to feel the stress relief happening already. And then I prompted it again to help me identify the things that were really quick. So I had like the things that were just like quick tasks. And then I had it help me to prioritize them. And so it just felt like, wow, this would have taken me a long time on my own to organize all my thoughts and what I feel like is this overwhelming mess in my head. And now it's all organized for me in seconds. So it was just mind blowing. What I would do is I would just make it fun, right? Like, like be playful with it. Instead of thinking I've got to use this tool for a specific thing for business or, or, or some, I, I would have fun with it. Like think about um, what's something that you're curious about and something that you wish someone would just do for you. So for example, if you've ever um, say that you've always wanted to work out with a personal trainer, like, oh, if I just had a personal trainer, you know, I'd be totally in shape, right? You'd say, okay, um, you'd say, okay, go into chat GPT and say, you are a personal trainer and I am this age and here's my, you know, my weight goal, my health goals. Give me uh, five days worth of what a 30 minute workout at home without any, any tools could look like, right? Some, something that you're curious about and it'll say, oh, great, sure, here it is. Monday, do this, right? And I'll give you a 30 minute workout and tell you to do these jumping lunges and pushups, whatever it is, right? So you just use it for something, or maybe it's, um, maybe you want to get ideas. Like I remember taking a client to this when I was introducing ChatGPT to my clients. And I said to her, I was like, what's something fun that you have coming up where you want to plan? And she said, oh, my mom is turning 90 and I want to come up with a really cool birthday celebration. She's not your average 90 year old. I said, great. So we went to ChatGPT and said, hey, come up with five different themes for my mother's 90th birthday. She loves to travel and sing and tell jokes and whatever. And it came up with five different themes. I said, okay, so now we picked one theme. And so we just went down the rabbit hole. Okay, give me an itinerary, a possible itinerary for this party. And right, right, what recipe should I use for making these types of foods? So I'd say just be playful with it so that you're not putting these rules on, I have to use it for this very thing. It's like, well, play with it to get to know it, to see what can it do. And then you can start opening up your mind and seeing what it can do for you in business and career and personal life, all of it. So thank you for watching another MetaMind AI interview. Remember to keep practicing prompting, keep learning, get our prompt pack and quick start video, watch our other videos to learn from other AI experts and stay tuned to us here on MetaMind. Stay subscribed because this is going to get really interesting.